Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I captured this image. Now this is an image of a piece of uh, arachnoid engineering or a spider's web. And the most difficult part about taking a picture of a spider's web, especially in these conditions, is spotting it in the first place. But believe it or not, there is actually a, a spider's web in amongst all these bushes. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to bring it out. So having looked through all of the uh, grass in some detail, I found a likely candidate in this spider's web just here. These are really difficult to see. Now, it becomes a little more obvious if I just put a piece of black card behind it. Can you see that now? And that gives you a clue as to exactly how we're going to make this stand out. In order to have a go at capturing this elusive piece of uh, natural engineering, uh, I'm going to uh, just show you what you get. If you just take a normal picture, just straight on, I'm just using a 24 to 70 millimeter zoom at the 70 end. It's actually so elusive, it's really hard to focus on it. About there somewhere, we'll just capture that. So there you go, you can see that that is fairly underwhelming. Um, so what we actually need to do is um, one, darken down the background. Uh, two, we need to find a way to make the spider's web a bit more visible. Uh, and three, we need to uh, gain a bit of separation somehow. Now the first two of these things can be addressed at the same time, just by adding a spot of flash. So what I'm going to do is put a uh, uh, portable flash head about here somewhere just to illuminate it from behind. Uh, I'll use high speed sync since we're outside uh, so that I can uh, wind up the uh, shutter speed so that um, I end up with uh, a dark background but an illuminated web. I'll set it up and you'll see what I mean. So for this exercise I'm going to be using uh, Profoto uh, B1X this is a uh, battery powered uh, studio flash uh, with modeling light and all the other bits and pieces. And I'm just going to place it down here somewhere so that it's illuminating the web from behind. Now obviously in daylight it's quite hard to set this up. I'll turn the modeling light on just to see if that helps at all, which helps a little bit. The web is very hard to see in the first place so anything that helps uh, is a good idea. There we go. So with the flash in place, uh, I'll put this uh, flash trigger on the camera. Now the settings that I had before uh, was around about a thirtieth of a second at f8, actually at 100 ISO. Um, so in order to make the background go dark, I'm going to need to go up by uh, four, five stops, something like that. So instead of using a thirtieth of a second, um, I'm going to start off by uh, winding that up to five hundredth of a second, uh, which is four stops. Okay, so just to make sure that that is blacking out the background, um, I'll just attempt to take a, uh, another picture. We just find the focus point again, somewhere on there. Well, that's going dark. Uh, I think that should do. Um, obviously the sun's coming round at the moment, which is illuminating part of the background. Uh, but uh, we'll see how we go. Right, so with that set, now I'll turn the flash on and we'll have another go. Okay, so that was half power. I'm just going to um, turn the energy up to full uh, on the flash head. have another go. There we go, that's starting to uh, give me the effect that I want. Now it's still quite hard to see um, the uh, spider's web at this point, but there's a little trick you can use uh, to make it much much more visible. And that little trick is just to spray it uh, with a mist of water, uh, which is what I'm going to do. So just ever so gently 
We don't want to damage the web. There we go. I think this one has actually long since been abandoned by its maker. There we go, that's much more visible. Okay, makes it a lot easier to focus as well. There we go. That's starting to get there. I might get in a bit closer actually, if I can. There we are. Now it's not quite catching all of it as we are at the moment. So I'm just going to adjust the lighting. I'm just going to take it round the back a bit more. Adjust that. And take out some of these distracting bits from the background. There we are. Now the water uh, does evaporate relatively quickly. So it's always a good idea just to top it up. Oh, our spider's come back. Let's just try that with a spider in the middle of the web. That's looking much better. And Mr. Spider's got a little confused. He obviously thinks the water drops are some form of food. He's gone back to bed again now. Just at the top of the frame there. Okay, so for capturing spiders' webs, uh, the moral of the story is to um, use a uh, studio flash or you can probably do it with a reasonable speed light. Um, but uh, you do need to get it in quite close. Uh, it's best if you illuminate from behind. Uh, and using high speed sync, of course, um, you will need to uh, make sure that all of the background goes uh, quite dark. You don't want it to disappear completely uh, because I think that would end up with a bit of a boring picture. We'll go into Photoshop now and just do the final bit of post-processing. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I've picked um, two images or two variants to, uh, to go forward with. Uh, I like this particular one because the spider's web itself uh, is very sharp. Uh, and I'm going to use this one because the spider's in the middle. Uh, it's not quite as sharp, but I think I can get away with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select the part of this image where the spider is. So just that bit. In fact, I might take a bit more of the web with it. Like that. Right, edit, copy, go along to my other version, and go to edit, paste. Right, so if I just change the opacity a bit, I should be able to move this so it's virtually in the right place. Somewhere around here. Yeah. Okay, so with that set, I'll put that back to 100%. Um, we'll zoom in a little. And I'll just add a mask to that layer so that I can paint various bits of it out. Uh, so with black set, get a brush, this is quite a large brush, let's, um, let's take it down a little bit, there we go, and we'll just paint this out until I'm right at the very centre. I know my other spider's there, I'll come back to him in a minute. Yes, I might just go back to white and just harden that up a bit and make it a bit smaller just to emphasize the spider. There we are. Okay, I think I've got away with that. Uh, so that's with and without. Oh, there's some bits right on the very end here. If I just turn off the background for a second. Oh yeah, you can see which bits I've got which are still showing through. So we just want to get rid of those. So 
So I'll just make the brush a bit bigger and get rid of those bits. There we are. And put that back. OK, uh, now the other spider at the top here, uh, I can use another piece of web from here. So it was up here somewhere. Uh, I don't want to use this one again because uh, it was slightly out of line. And this will give me more uh, control. So I'll just grab a bit at the top there. And we'll go edit copy. Go back to my original one. Edit paste. Okay. Now I should be able to move that more or less into position. It's going to be around there somewhere. So what I might do is just again change the opacity to about 50% uh, so I can move it around. Yes, it's about there, isn't it? It's just slightly, it just needs to be distorted ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit and go to uh, Free Transform, which will allow me just to distort it a bit. So I'll just move that in ever so slightly like that. go. This is probably caused by the camera being at a slightly different angle as I was hand holding it at the time. There. That's probably close enough for this purpose. So let's go OK with that. So we'll reset that to 100% uh, and then with that layer selected uh, we'll just make an inverse mask so most of it is hidden uh, and then wherever I paint in white will reveal the layer underneath um, so let me just make this brush a little softer and a little smaller and we'll just carefully paint away the spider Go. There's one and there's the other. Okay, so with those two little adjustments made, we'll have a, a global look at the, uh, the image and see what else needs doing. I think this back corner uh, is possibly a little bright. Uh, we could knock that down a little. Um, so what I will do is just go to the background um, and we'll just add an adjustment layer, uh, an exposure adjustment layer, and I will just take that down quite a way. Whoops, just take the offset with it. Offset is very sensitive, you have to be very careful with offset. Go uh, and now I'll just paint in the bits I want. Now obviously, the bright bits are the uh, the other layers that are above it. But once I paint in the rest, you'll see what I mean. there. That's looking particularly nice, I think. Um, so if I just turn that on and off, you see the difference that makes. There we go. Uh, and then finally, I think we'll just pick a nice crop. Uh, I do tend to like 16 by 9 because it fits the video very well. Um, let's just move that in a little. 
that's, there's a bit of dead space on that side. There's also these bits on the other side, which I think we could possibly get rid of. Take that to about there. Although I think actually that adds a bit to it, having that in the foreground. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So we'll OK that. And there we go. And that just goes to show what you can do uh, with a few little simple techniques uh, to capture the best of nature. Well, I hope you like seeing that, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.